Good morning. I hope you all are absolutely fine. So we have already dealt with the structuralism and today I'm going to focus on post structuralism. See focus on the word post structuralism. And you'll find that, uh, you know, you have a prefix post in, in post structuralism. So this prefix post in, in post structuralism, uh, it shows that uh, this school of thought is not only a critique of structuralism, but it also poses challenges to the methods and principles of structuralism. <coughs> I hope you all are familiar with the name of Jack Derrida and uh, if you remember he delivered a lecture at, uh, at uh, Johns Hopkins University in, in 1966. So this lecture is considered as, as a manifesto against <coughs> structuralism. Fine. Now this term post structuralism. Uh, it is basically an umbrella term and, and it includes Derrida and uh, the Yale School and uh, uh, Michel Foucault and, and Mikhail Bakhtin and, and Jacques Lacan, right? So if you talk about the Yale School, in the Yale School we have uh, critics like uh, Harold Bloom and Hills Miller and, and Paul Demon and, and Jeffrey fine <coughs> anyways now Derrida and the Yale school I mean they, they basically focus on text and textuality right then Foucault and Bakhtin you know they focus on society and Lacan Lacan focuses on the mind fine so we have four groups in this in this you know term uh, Derrida, then the Yale School, then uh, Michel Foucault and Mikhail Bakhtin, and and Jacques Lacan, right? And the focus of Derrida and the Yale School is on uh, text and textuality, and the focus of Foucault and and Bakhtin is on on society, and the focus of Lacan is on the mind right <coughs> then uh, deconstruction uh, see this is this is a Derridian school of thought and uh, it is one branch of post structuralism see there is a confusion about the two terms I mean deconstruction and and post structuralism so I'm just just uh, going to clarify it <coughs> see Deconstruction is, is a Derridian school of thought and it is, it is just one branch of post-structuralism, right? And Peter Berry, he calls it applied post-structuralism. I mean, Peter Berry calls deconstruction as applied post-structuralism. Fine. Then in some usage, uh, post-structuralism and deconstruction they are synonymous and in, in others uh, deconstruction is a part of a larger movement called post-structuralism which includes not only Derrida but Lacan and Foucault also right then another perception is that uh, what is post-structuralism in Europe is deconstruction in the US. It means in the US this is deconstruction and in Europe this is post-structuralism. Right. Anyways. <clears throat> now try to understand the nub of post-structuralism. And one thing is very clear that it was a reaction against structuralism. So post-structuralism it basically reacts against the theory of language uh, which has been given by Ferdinand de Saussure in structuralism, right? Now, I hope you remember that uh, uh, Saussure says that words do not directly correspond to external objects, but they are signs, 
made up of two parts i have already told you while talking about structuralism that every sign has two parts uh, the signifier and the signified right so try to understand now what is this sign see signs are words that we use signs are words that we use uh say for example uh, you know the word way way in english this is way fine but uh, in 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 the german language this way is you know weg weg w e g weg but uh, in the french language you know this way becomes uh, schuma schuma and the spelling is Uh, C H E M I N. Fine, and the same word I mean this way. Uh, it is called it is called Camino, Camino in the Spanish language. C A M I N O. Fine. So I hope uh, <clears throat> what are signs? I mean this is clear to you, right? So. so sure says that words do not directly correspond to external objects but they are signs made of two parts the signifier and the signified and as i have told you you know the signifier you know that that stands for the sound pattern and the signified you know that is basically the the meaning evoked or conveyed right then so sho further says that uh, the relationship between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary and conventional and the language system operates through this pattern so this thing you have to keep in your mind right thus this system of so sho it basically rejects the idea that a word or a symbol corresponds to an outside object what does it mean it means the meaning of one sign it depends only in relationship with other signs getting my point so it simply means that the meaning of one sign it can depend only in relationship with other signs and the only way to get meaning is by difference or how one sign or word differs from another uh, a bit complex uh, let me let me clarify it with the help of some example and uh, selden and widowson uh, they have explained this this you know system through the sign system of uh, traffic lights uh, you all might have seen you know <clears throat> the traffic system in all the nations right so whenever you see the red signal it means you have to stop and whenever you see the green signal it means you have to go fine so selden and widowson they explain that the red color in traffic system it signifies stop though there is no bond between red and stop so try to understand you know the red color in in the traffic system you know it signifies stop but there is no bond between red and stop so the meaning is derived through a system of opposites it simply means that the meaning of red depends on the fact that it is not green or it is not blue or it is not brown i hope you are getting the point fine so the meaning of red it depends on the fact that it is not blue or it is not black or it is not green fine in the same way we can apply this on other words also <clears throat> say for example you know bat b a t bat bat is bat because it is not hat or mat getting the point in the same way hat is hat because it is not cat or pat i hope you are getting the point bat is bat because it is not hat because bat is different and hat is different and hat is hat because it is not cat or pat again it means 
the relationship between the signifier and the signified it is not actual or natural but it is purely structural and conventional getting my point again you can find that uh, dog in english uh, you know dog in english it refers to the four legged furry animal and uh, you know the same four legged furry animal it is called kutta in in hindi and i think it, it is called uh, shawn in 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 sanskrit right but in greek or german the acoustic symbol dog you know it has no meaning clear now so show says that though there is no natural bond or meaningful relation between the signifier and the signified but the association between them is stable stable thus you know so shore's language system is a closed stable system with a fixed structure of meaning now this is what dari da reacts to now try to understand uh, you know so shore talk so shore talks about fixed meaning he talks about you know stable meaning but you know dari da reacts to this stable meaning or this you know fixed meaning getting my point <clears throat> so derrida basically objects to this stable unity between the signifier and the signified right again we can say that uh, you know this theory that is structuralism it it creates a wedge between the sign and the meaning conveyed through it but post structuralism you know it breaks the bond inherent in the signifier and the signified right now what is the reaction of derrida see reacting to to socio derrida says that if every sign has its meaning in terms of its difference to other signs then meaning must be relational means there can be no fixed meaning there can be a number of meaning of one sign right so if if every sign has its meaning in 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 terms of its its difference to other signs then meaning must be you know relational so green is green because it is not red so the meaning of green is coming because this green is different from red getting my point so meaning must be you know relational i mean this is this is what what derrida says right thus to capture the signified i mean the the meaning conveyed we keep moving from one signifier to another and and we never get to the signified and in this way we keep you know we keep going round and round fine now derrida feels that language is structured as an endless deferral of meaning and any search for a stable meaning is not possible fine so so show you know he talks about some stable meaning but darida says that you know search for a stable meaning is not possible so what does he feel he feels that if a sign is a sign of another sign so in the same way a text must be a text of another text right so one sign is getting meaning because it is different from another sign so in the same way a text must get its meaning because it is different from another text and in the same way a context must be a context of another context so a context must get meaning because it is different from another context right so it simply means that even contextual meaning is not fixed even contextual meaning is not fixed right say for example i am giving you one example of uh, of you know the contextual meaning how it 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 changes from situation to situation or from context to context say for example the expression is not now darling not now darling now these three words not now darling 
the three words may give different meanings contextually how see uh, with uh, while using these three words a mother may deny ice cream to her child okay a mother may say to to her child not now my darling this is not the time of uh, you know ice cream right but uh, you know in in a different situation in a different context you know when a husband and a wife when they both are alone so these three was not now darling you know this may be the denial of a wife to her husband maybe the husband is insisting for love but the wife very gently may deny by using three words not now darling so you know there is there is no fixed meaning and that is what what you know post structuralism asserts there is no fixed meaning right the text is a cloth and textus is the form from which text is derived and if you remember lacan also says that a text is like a dream you can never say what it means so there can be no no fixed meaning in a text fine so meaning may vary from reading to reading from context to context from person to person fine uh, some of you can find oedipus complex in hamlet some of you cannot find oedipus complex in in hamlet so a text is like a dream and you can never say what it means exactly right so derrida feels that uh, the meaning of a sign is a matter of what the sign is not and in a sentence or or a text you know we can find a trace of meaning as as the definite meaning does not exist now what is this trace see this this trace is what a word or what a sign differs from and a trace is that which is implied not visible and present yet it makes its presence felt through its absence say for example the word lamp so you know a lamp uh, you know it it gives artificial light right so a lamp is not the sun or the moon but you know whenever you talk about a lamp it can have the trace of the sun or the moon you getting my point so the meaning of the sun in the lamp is implied so this is basically trace fine and uh, at the same time we can say that uh, you know if 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 all objects were of uh, the same color then i think there would be no need for words like red green or blue or brown so red is red because it is different from blue and green and brown and it means that red carries with itself the trace of other colors fine and it is an an infinite free play of the signifiers because no sign is fully meaningful fine now in order to stop this play of meaning you know we need to find what derrida calls a transcendental signified and that is a sign that does not depend on another signs for meaning fine then there is a basically gives a new concept of uh, grammatology that is that is the science of writing and he argues that that all ideas of structure they they depend upon the notion of a center which is the source of meaning fine now what is the center this center is a strange part of a system or a structure and this center is paradoxically both within the structure and outside it try to understand this center is paradoxically both within the structure and outside this structure right it means it is part of the structure but not part of this structure say for example you know in christianity uh god creates the world and he rules it but you know uh he is not part of it god creates the world 
and he rules it. But uh, interestingly, he is not part of it. And in a literary work, you know, the author is seen as the center, I mean the origin and the source of all meaning. And if we consider a literary work as, as a structure or, or language system, then the author becomes the center of that structure. Fine. So the author becomes the center of that structure and the text, you know, or, or a literary work, you know, it becomes it becomes a, a language system or, or it works as a structure. Right. Now, Derrida says that uh, the concept of structure, uh, it must be thought as, as a series of substitution of center for center. Now, say for example, you know, in theology, uh, the center is God. But uh, the problem is that God as a signifier has no definite signified. Now, can you, can you give any proper shape to God? Can you talk about his, his structure, his, his dressing sense and, and his, his other things? So the fact is that God as a signifier has no definite, you know, signified, right? And what we have is a chain of substitutions. So this God is known by so many names like Spirit, like Father, like First Cause, like Prime Mover, like Most High, like Super Soul, like Super Spirit. Right. Then in his book of uh, Grammatology, Darida says that there is no center and, and no transcendental signified. Right. To him, sign systems are not stable structures of meaning which can be definitively analyzed by structuralists. Right? So the main difference between structuralism and post-structuralism is that of that of you know the, the stable meaning. I mean in structuralism, I mean there is the talk of, of some stable meaning, of some fixed meaning. But in post-structuralism, the idea is that there can be no fixed meaning. There can be no stable meaning. Right. So, Derrida basically focuses on a never-ending play of meaning, which can be, you know, dissemination. What is dissemination? This is basically the scattering of meaning without any center. It can be traced. Trace, I have already told you, and it can be textuality and it can be supplement. So, supplement is basically, you know, Derrida took this term from Rousseau. I mean, Rousseau who, who saw a supplement as an, as an inessential extra added to something complete in itself. And Derrida says that what is already complete in itself, you know, nothing can be added to it. Fine. So what is complete in itself cannot be added to and a supplement can occur where there is lack. Fine. So I hope this, this you know, post-structuralism is clear to you. And uh, now I'll, I'll try to make, I, I'll try to point out some, some differences between structuralism and post-structuralism. And I'll do it with the help of some examples so that you can understand both the approaches clearly. Thank you and good day.